They say that smart people have the ability to explain complex things simply. And that is the perfect description of our next presenter, Munro Partners Chief Investment Officer. Nick Griffin holds the title for best pick of 2021 with OnSemi. Let's see what hidden gem he has for us today. Paul Kelly, probably one of Australia's best singers and songwriters. But he also tells a really, really good story. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try and channel a bit of my inner Paul Kelly. And I'm going to try and tell you a really good story. Hopefully a good story. And so what we've done here is we've brought a little virtual campfire along. And we want you all to imagine that we're out in the Tasmanian wilderness and we're all huddling around this virtual campfire. And we're all telling really tall stories, really tall stories about things that you could barely believe are possible. And we're all competing with each other to tell better and better stories. A bit like this conference, really. Now, the story I'm going to tell you is a pretty tall one. It's going to have all sorts of the usual things. It's got a hero in it, it's got a villain in it, it's got a little bit of regret, and it's got a, a message of hope at the end. The story is about a company that makes really, really little things that helps big things grow. So gather in close and let the story begin. And so we've all lived a lifetime, a lifetime of story of making things smaller and better. Everyone knows the story that the iPhone in your pocket today actually is 100,000 times more powerful than the computer that sent the man to the moon. But what we actually don't know, or what we also probably do know, is that it's semicomers, it's actually the shrink in semiconductors that allows this to continue. It's our ability to get more and more transistors onto that silicon wafer that actually allows semiconductors to get faster, smaller, and better, which ultimately allows these industries to improve over time. But the key player we want to talk about this story is the one that allows this shrink to continue. That's the key player that we're going to be talking about today. And so what we all know is these companies at the bottom, these are the users, these are the companies that make the products that we use every day that make our life better. And we probably also know about the semiconductors on top of that. They're the guys designing the semiconductors that go into these products that make them better. But what you probably didn't know is that they don't actually make the semiconductors. It's actually the foundries that make the semiconductors. These are the companies that are basically specialised in mass production of semis, mass production of shrink. And what we're interested in today is the tools that is actually helping them do that shrink. Because it's the tools that helps them do that shrink that allows the designers to make better semiconductors, that allows the products to be better and better every single day. And there's one particular tool we want to talk about today that's actually the key highlight of our story. And so like any good story or any good campfire story, it usually happened in a faraway place, and the, and the details are usually pretty sketchy and hard to verify. But to fix that problem, what we're going to do here is we're going to take off from the Tasmanian Convention Centre, also the Hobart Convention Centre, and head all the way over to the Netherlands, to the small town of Veldhoven, population 45,000 people. And here in Veldhoven, you'll find what we think is probably the world's most important factory. And at this important factory, you're going to find lots of really important people in white coats. And these important people in white coats are making what we think is the world's most important box. And this box, this tool, is the hero of our story today. And the company that makes this box is the hero. And that company is... Pause for impact, Nick. ASML. ASML, listed in the Netherlands, with a market cap of roughly 200 billion euros, is ASML develops and produces semiconductor manufacturing tools, specifically lithography tools for the production of high-end semiconductors. And so rather than sit here and tell you what this box does and take this story off on a really, really, really long tangent, I'm just going to tell you what lithography is and why it's important. You see, lithography is essentially just a stencil, no different to the one we put on the roadside there. But it's a stencil for semiconductors. It's a stencil that allows us to get more and more transistors onto that silicon wafer. And what's important about this stencil is the more precise the stencil is, the more transistors you can put on there. The more transistors you put on there, the better and better the semiconductor gets. And I think it's important just to recognize the numbers that we're dealing here with this stencil. Because if you go all the way back to 1971, we were able to get 2,000 transistors on a leading edge semiconductor at that point in time. And then every two years under Moore's law, we doubled the amount of semiconductors exponentially until this year, NVIDIA managed to put 81 billion transistors on the same integrated circuit with, this, with, with better and better lithography the whole way. So to put that in perspective, if this room was a semiconductor wafer, 
and everybody sitting here was a transistor, then this room today can actually fit 81 billion people in it. 81 billion people from the 600 that we have today. That's the power of what lithography does. And the thing that everyone misses, the thing that everyone misses is the value that this creates. Okay, so it's not just the amazing lithography that we're talking about here, it's the value that it creates, because what's happening here is we are making computers faster. The faster we make computers, the more things they can do. And so from my point of view, I first, if you think about the internet as just being a big computer, I first touched a computer in 1996. I was sitting in an internet cafe in Brazil, and I was on Google, and I sent an email to my parents, and it said, please send more money. <laughs> but that was all it could do. But then as we moved further, as shrink would continue, and as lithography shrunk, we could do more. It eventually got on our telephones, and that creates more value. That creates Apple. And then it shrinks further. We can share pictures. Then we can do e-commerce. Then we can do payments. Then we can stream video. All this value created from shrink. And now we sit here today in the sharing economy where my kids can sit in their bedroom, they can get onto Uber, they can order Uber Eats, they can track the Uber to our house, they can go outside, get the food, go upstairs and eat it. The payment goes to the cloud and comes out of my bank account, all without me even knowing about it. <laughs> and all of this is happening, all of this amazing way to take money off your parents is happening because of the, impro the improving growth of semiconductors, the improving growth of shrink. And so it's important to remember it's not just technology, it does good things as well. So hospitals have more, more better equipment. We can make glucose devices that can track your blood monitoring. We can, make we can make robots that do surgery. We can cure a pandemic, and we can even do personalized medicine. And it's all happening because we're fitting more and more transistors onto that in uh, integrated circuit. The reality is, from little things, big things grow. And so the best part of this story is that ASML, our hero of our story, is in fact the only hero. There can only be one. It is a monopoly of high-end lithography. Back in 2005, there were a number of companies that could do this, but as shrink continued, it got harder and harder. That box I showed you before is actually called an EUV machine. An EUV machine basically in 2008 cracked the problem of putting more than 100 million transistors on one millimeter squared. And now, since 2018, all further shrink can only be done with EUV technology. And so if you have the power to create value well into the future, and you're the only one that has it, well, then you can charge for it. ASML sells one of these boxes for roughly 190 million euros. And the next box that's coming, the high NA EUV box, they sell for roughly 350 million euros. And that's roughly the price of an A380 jumbo. And so from that price, at that price, who the hell's buying these things? It's the foundries. Those foundries I told you about earlier, they're the people that have to create the shrink. They are on the never-ending race to shrink because how they sell better semiconductors to their customers is by shrinking. They constantly compete with each other to get through lower and lower nodes, and they do that by buying more and more ASML machines. None of them ever wants to give up on this race because you can never afford to fall behind. Adding to the story is the new villain in our story. We actually have a new villain that wasn't there a few years ago, which is China. China on the right here, with its intentions towards Taiwan, basically has the rest of the world effectively bricking itself that they don't have access to high-end semiconductors. And so now we've seen more than $300 billion worth of spending announced to build semiconductor capacity outside of Asia, to effectively diversify away from these sources. Putting that together, an AFML is going to sell a whole bunch of EUV machines. It's grown significantly to 2018, to roughly 40 this year per annum. But we expect this to grow to roughly 90 by 2026, and after that, they'll start selling the high-end AEV machines. ASML, consequently, ASML's revenue will grow dramatically to roughly 15% per annum, all the way to 2030. And it's pretty much economically insensitive because it all over-indexes to this EUV rollout tech opportunity. Putting that together, we see ASML's EPS actually growing from roughly 14 euros today to 41 by 2025. Assuming it holds its 27 times multiple, we'd expect this company to deliver 105% return over two years, or roughly 50% per annum, for a considerable amount of time. The second thing I'd just point out is that red line, is the share price. The share price has actually fallen 30% this year. It's fallen with the rest of the semiconductor universe, mainly, but, but we actually expect their earnings to accelerate. And what you're actually getting here is a unique opportunity to buy a company that we've actually owned for over a decade. In fact, I've wanted to pitch this stock at SON for all of the last four years. And the only reason I didn't do it 
Because this is a bloody complicated story to say in eight minutes. <laughs> and I'm running up against the red line, so I need to wrap this up. So as promised, I said we'd finish with a message of hope. And that message of hope is that for you to sit back and think about the unimaginable. The reality is we now know that ASML will continue the roadmap of shrink. We have at least three or four modes to go. And so that 81 billion transistors on that semiconductor is about to turn into one trillion by the end of the decade. That one trillion of semiconductors, oh, sorry, transistors, will ultimately mean every computer in the world is going to get between 15 and 25 times more powerful. And that's going to create exponentially more growth, exponentially more value opportunities. And what we see here is ASML is effectively underwriting all human progress into the future and ultimately helping us solve many of the world's problems. And so while we can't actually tell you what's going to happen in the future, I can say pretty clearly that it's going to be exciting. And so that's the story of ASML. As unbelievable as it is, it is actually true. And the best thing for all of us is the story is now going to continue. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you.